Hello, everyone. Um, thank you. My name is Branimir Lambov. Uh, for the last 10 years, I've been working at Statistax on uh, the internal storage of Apache Cassandra. Before that, I've done things as disparate as uh, vector graphics, uh, natural language processing, uh, exact computations on real numbers, and also digital signal processing, so very different from, from what I'm doing here. Uh, this talk is about Apache Cassandra, which is uh, known as, uh, kind of it's got its name as a database of last resort, which means that uh, most of the people come to Cassandra after they've tried everything else and it's failed. Cassandra works in these cases. Uh, it's a NoSQL database, distributed, replicated. Uh, it can be a key value store, but it can be more than a key value store. Uh, you have these user designation, designated partitioning keys, which is uh, you give part of your uh, row keys as um, so, so called partitions, partition keys, and everything that uh, has different partition keys can be distributed among nodes, and everything that has the same partition keys and maybe different clustering key components, which is the other part of the key, has to stay on the same node and has to be ordered for queries. Um, the internal storage in, in Apache Cassandra is a log structured merge tree, which you can see is a right optimized store. Um, and the, the database itself is written in Java, which means that we are sometimes, uh, we have to be very careful about garbage collection for one thing. Um, the problem we are going to talk about in here is the, um, the problem of organizing and finding data by a given key. So this can be something for um, indexing data which is in memory, or for indexing data which is on disk, or indexing data which is in a combination of memory and disk. Uh, what we want to do is either find the data by a specific key, or look for a position where we should start iterating all the, the, the greater components after this key. Um, and also, we can this, the key can be simple, like an integer, or it can be some combination of various components, which are uh, a lot of them, maybe some of them are long, some of them are strings, some of them are integers, some of them are something else. Uh, and you have to be able to efficiently index data with these keys. Uh, the common solution to this problem uh, that everybody's been using for, for a long time is um, some form of, some form of uh, comparison-based structure. Either you could use a sorted array and you do a thing, a thing like a binary search in, in that sorted array, uh, a variation of this, which is modifiable, is a binary tree or a different variation on the concept of a binary tree. Um, you can also use skip lists, or um, once things become, you want to make things more complex and more efficient, and especially for when working on disk, you can organize these things in, in B trees where um, you put a lot of information in, in individual nodes so that you can make as many decisions as possible before leaving this piece of data that you brought, for example, from disk. And the final example I give here is a B plus tree, which is essentially a B tree, which is indexing into a long sorted, sorted list. So you pick up a, a selection of the keys in that sorted list, and you just index these in the B tree, and they point into positions in the, in the sorted list. All of these solutions are used to some extent in, in Cassandra. And all of these have one thing in common. They rely on comparisons. So you have a sequence of keys. Uh, se each key has a certain type. And every time you're making decisions which way to go into this structure, you're doing a comparison of the key with the, the value at the current position in the, in the structure. And depending on the results, smaller, greater, the same, you're making a decision where to go next. Um, this has a, a few efficiency problems. Uh, one of them is that if you, if you really have long keys, like a combination of several components, uh, some of them being, for example, long strings or UUIDs or something like that, um, you end up having to um, have these keys in their full form before you can call a comparison function. They need to be, for example, if you have something like a big integer in Java, you can't just use it the way it's written on disk. You have to deserialize it from disk create a big integer object, and then call big, in big integers compare um, to, to do the decision. Uh, this means that there's a lot of work to do the deserialization, or if you're keeping things in memory, you need to go somewhere to find that object, and also that object has a cost associated with keeping it around. Uh, because the keys 
sometimes are long, and their length is, can be very, very diff diff different. Um, it's, it's not easy to package these things. Um, even if we're talking about um, on disk where you have pages of 400, 4,000 bytes or something like this, uh, sometimes you can fit a lot of keys in, that, in these 4,000 bytes, but if they're long keys, maybe you can fit two or three or something that's very, very small. And uh, the flip side of this is that when we have so long keys and uh, so few of them in a, in a page, they're very inefficient to cache because uh, only a few of them can, can, can reside in cache. Another issue is that if, we're, if we have sequences of keys, it's practically guaranteed that you're going to have the same key repeating many, many times, the same prefix of the key repeating many, many times, because the first component, for example, is the same. And if you don't take care of avoiding that repetition, you're going to do a lot of work, repeated work, comparing again and again the same, the same value of the key. So usually to make this work, uh, one would create hierarchies of maps where you would follow one map until you reach a point, then you'd, use a, uh, you'd have another map which um, you, you then follow for the next component of the key and so on, which leads to more complex code than, than it maybe needs to be. Um, the final point here is that uh, since we're doing comparison and our keys are, if they are k bytes long, then we always have this OK multiplier for every, for every comparison. So if we have a logarithmic structure, this logarithm is multiplied by the, by the length of the key as well. Um, can we do better? Imagine uh, types which are lex lexicographically comparable. Specifically, uh, one of the, the examples uh, that they may immediately come to mind are strings. And if you look at the, the examples in, on the right, we have a few strings here, which are sequences of, um, of paths, which are paths, sequences of, uh, um, um, yeah, which are long paths. Uh, and if you, because they're lexicographically comparable, if you're looking for something that starts with R, you don't need to go through or to even have the whole documents Alice 2024, June 9th uh, in memory to be able to make a decision whether your query for receipts is uh, before documents or after. It, it suffices to ju just look at the first letter. The D is smaller than R, so D is before R. Um, because of that, we can also um, don't need to store the the whole key in some of the key in some of the places in our uh, data structure that, that we use to, to query a piece of, to query the database, uh, we can sometimes store just prefixes of the keys, and this leads to much much more compact uh, storage. In other words, because these keys are lexicographically comparable, we have a little bit more structure in them, and we can exploit the structure to make more efficient choices of data structures. And the typical data structure that's used to, um, to query things uh, which have byte order are tries. They're also called prefix or radix trees, and they're basically trees where you have every edge labeled by a character or a byte value. And um, when you to insert a piece of data in the try, you would create a path that leads from the root, uh, taking every character of your, um, of your string, and uh, at the place you end, after following all of these transitions, you put the, the value you need, to, you need to store. And querying is the, doing the same thing, just starting from the root, going forward using all the bytes of the, uh, of the string until you reach some, some piece of information. If the data, if the type that you're indexing, or the data you're indexing is um, byte ordered, this is also an ordered map, and you can find the place um, for a given key, you can find the place where you need to start iterating easily uh, with complexity. Again, that's uh, uh, the length of the key only. Tries have been discovered, have been around for a long, long time. Um, they're closely related to deterministic finite state automata, or in other words, regular expressions. Um, they, they're used a lot where there's text processing, but uh, they're typically or traditionally not used in databases. There are some reasons for that. Um, 
And first reason is that, um, well, we use lots of types in databases. Some of them are byte-ordered, like strings, but some of them are not. Integers, for example, because negative integers are larger in value than uh, in absolute value than, than positive ones, you can't directly do um, byte order on them. Um, also, most databases, um, or most SQL databases, want to have their data on disk, and either they want to mutate it on disk, and mutable on disk tries are something that's not, not very efficient, that, that I don't know, or I don't think anybody knows of a good way to store um, a mutable try structure on disk. And finally, even if this is not the case, uh, and if you do a naive implementation of, uh, uh, of a try, it's not going to be as good as, um, as the way that B trees have been for a, for a while. Now, about 10 years ago, uh, however, uh, in academia, uh, there, there came out a paper called the Adaptive Radix Tree, which gave an example how tries can still be used for, for databases. And it described an in-memory index for, for a database and showed that it can be quite a, very efficient. This was uh, part of the trigger why we started work on, on on tries in, in Apache Cassandra. And uh, there was another paper later in 2018 which also showed how we can store on-disk data. As long as it's immutable, we can have an index which is very efficient using tries again. Uh, around this time, we already had our first implementation of, of tries for Cassandra. Now, let's come back to the problems and the reasons why tries are traditionally not used in databases. The first one is that the keys are not byte-ordered. How can we solve this? Um, even though the normal form, uh, the typical form, the typical serialization of the keys usually is not byte comparable, we can come up with a translation which takes your original value and turns it into something which is byte comparable. The simplest examples here are um, if you have signed integers, uh, because negative values have their signed bit one, they, uh, the usual comparison would put them above unsigned integers, if we're just comparing bytes by unsigned value like we do in strings. Uh, and this has a very simple, simple solution or simple fix. Just flip this sign, sign, sign bit. Uh, then negative numbers become smaller than positive ones, and we can use this serialization as a um, byte comparable translation. You can do a very similar trick for floating point, uh, because IEEE floating point already has the, the property that um, uh, for, for example, for positive integers, if the positive integer has a, 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 a bigger um, integer value, as if we interpret it as an integer, this also means that the, the floating point number is bigger, and it's also um, the inverse for negative numbers. Uh, we can do the same, a very similar trick. We can, again, flip the sign bit, because we want the, uh, the negative numbers to be before the positive ones. And also, if the number is negative, or that sign bit was one, we, can also, we also need to flip all of the other bits so that um, bigger numbers in absolute value, bigger negative numbers in absolute value, come before smaller negative numbers in absolute value. Right. And uh, this trick, or a similar trick, you can apply to every type that, uh, for example, Cassandra supports uh, for indexing. and. Uh, I'm sure for practically every other database that uh, people use, you can um, define a byte comparable translation for all of the types. This also includes some, some of the very complex types that we have in Cassandra, like a big integer, which has an integer with uh, as many, as many, as long an integer as you want, or a big decimal, which can be decimal uh, number with any um, exponent and any length of uh, and any precision, we can also encode these in byte comparable sequences efficiently. Uh, another thing that's pretty important is that once we've done translation of individual types, we can also combine sequences of types and out of them form a single sequence of bytes, which you can use for a translation of the key. And instead of comparing uh, every time with the separate components of the key, the, the infrastructure that does the lookup can use this flat, component, uh, flat multi component key as just one single sequence of bytes throughout. Um, so this solves the byte, um, byte ordered problem. What about the mutable on disk tries? Um, we are using Cassandra, 
And Cassandra is a database that uh, relies on a log structured merge tree. And uh, the features of the log structured merge tree, two of them are really important. The data, uh, when somebody writes a piece of data in Cassandra, we first put it into an in memory buffer, which we call the mem table. Uh, this buffer um, serves recently written data, and uh, from time to time it fills up, and then it is flushed to disk. And on disk, it's an uh, immutable SS table. From time to time, we reorganize these SS tables, which means taking a lot of SS tables and compacting them into one single one, which is again immutable. So the on disk components are all immutable, and the thing that, we, uh, that initially accepts all the data is in memory. So we never have a mutable on disk uh, structure that we need to, to maintain in Cassandra. What about the third part? Um, not as good as B trees. And here's an example of why uh, you would think that uh, tries are not, not as efficient as B trees. Um, now, B trees advance by comparing keys, um, while tries advance by the next byte. Uh, because we can have very long keys, um, for example, composed of 100 bytes or something like that, uh, this may need, mean that we need to go very deep into the structure of the try. And if this means that every time we take a transition and go from one, one node to the next, we um, have, to pick, uh, have to fetch something from disk, this may mean as many as 100, in this example, fetches from disk, which is very, very inefficient. It's not something that you want to do at all. Um, B trees solve this problem by packing, by taking quite a few keys and packing them into a single um, on this page and doing a bit of processing on this um, page before they have to move on to the next page, which is the, the main thing that makes them so efficient at uh, on disk structures. Um, but the thing that tries have uh, for them is that they're space efficient, uh, but this is only if you store them properly, if you can use some, some naive method uh, where you, you always have a, a, a dense map, this can also be something that is not there. How can we improve tries to make them efficient? Um, so looking at this example here, we have a lot of paths where we have um, just, just a single way to go. Uh, for example, the node path, uh, we would have uh, first from one, one of the nodes we take an end transition, and then we have only one way to go. There's no, there's no other option. Um, we can pack these into uh, combined nodes where we have multiple transitions in just one, uh, one piece of data. And if we do this, the height of the tree immediately shrinks quite a bit. Um, these we call chain nodes. We would use this. Some of the other things that we do is also because when we write the node, uh, when we write the, the try to disk, um, we follow um, the structure of the sorted data, uh, which often means that uh, the data, um, the, the children of a node, are usually pretty close to the node itself. We can use different, uh, different sizes of pointers for, for different nodes in the hierarchy. And uh, because uh, the lower you are in the, in the hierarchy of the tree, the closer your children are to, um, to the parent, you can use smaller and smaller keys. And because the, the ones to the bottom of the tree are many more than the others in, in the tree, uh, you would have a quite a bit of efficiency by, by using smaller pointers for the, for the leaves. And also, we can change the type of node. Sometimes you have multiple, uh, we have a lot of nodes in, in the try, and you want to be as efficient as possible choosing where to go. And then you would use dense types of trees. Or you have uh, only a few children, like five, six, uh, ten, where it would be uh, very inefficient to store uh, the 256 possible, uh, possible children and just um, have now most of the space and, and just a few, a few positions filled. Um, instead, you would like to store a list of the possible, possible values and look it up. Uh, so using type nodes and choosing different things to do depending on where you are in the try and uh, how far your children are is very, is very good at making, uh, making a try much more compact than, than it would naively be. Um, another thing you can almost immediately use is um, in the case of our SS tables, we already have a sorted list um, 
assorted table on disk. Uh, much like in the case of the B plus trees, we only need to um, index into it or find the position where our key might be. And we can do this without storing the whole key in the, in the index, in the try. We can store only the unique prefix. And when we store the unique prefix, we can follow that unique prefix. It leads us to a point in the data file. And at that point in the data file, the key might be the same that we're looking for, or it might be different. We need, we can check that, and we can tell whether in the, uh, there is anything in that SS table for this key or not. I mean, since the prefix is unique, if we matched um, the prefix but didn't find the same value in the in the data file, it's certain that there are no other values in, in this SS table that, that match that key. Um, one of the things that may be inefficient about doing something like this is that you need to go into the data file, which usually isn't in, in cache, uh, and you would prefer to not do this if there's a high probability of not having a match. And you can very easily do this by storing some hash bits in, um, in the try and using that to uh, reject the potential mismatches uh, a lot of the time. And finally, and perhaps more, most importantly, um, you can do page packing or putting a lot of related data in a disk page for tries as well. You can do, uh, I mean, this trick that B-trees uh, rely on for, for making them really efficient for, for on disk. This is something you can also do for, for tries. Um, the key here is that we're doing this for immutable um, data structures. While we, be, while we are building the data structure, we uh, fill from the bottom um, some structure in the try until it becomes bigger than a on disk page. And at this point, we flush some of the structure on disk, which means that we um, basically we follow uh, a chain of related nodes and we form this structure, the, we put this structure of related nodes into the same page so that we can follow as much as possible of sub-transitions inside this page and before we have to leave it. And we build this for the, from the bottom up. Um, so every time we create a page, uh, the pointers that lead into this page then become leaves for the next process of, uh, of building, building pages. And we end up with something that um, um, has a very small um, intermediate set of nodes uh, at the bottom that usually stay cached in memory. And we follow these until, at the end, um, we have to go on disk to fetch um, the final page that le would lead us to the, um, direct, to the exact position of the, of the data we're looking for. Um, yeah, this is equivalent to the B-tree packing of, of keys. But now we do this with uh, just simple transitions like in the try, just, uh, just bytes rather than big keys, which can be much, much more efficient. And in other words, um, we now have improved tries which, um, which can advance on the next byte, or we can advance on multiple bytes if we know that there's only one path um, in, in the try for this position. Uh, we have long keys, increased depth, but only sometimes. And usually if the... Um, if you have multiple bytes leading to something, these bytes are also shared by um, because we we're removing uh, the rest of the, the key if you have if we've reached a unique prefix. Uh, when we follow such a path, usually there's a lot of uh, possibilities from there, so it was needed to have this, this information in, in the try. Um, because we pack related pages and uh, related notes in pages, we can do several steps before we have to leave a page, and we're very efficient in, in using uh, on pages from the disk. And finally, if you have an already sorted list and you want to index it, if you're using a B, B plus tree, you would select a portion of the keys to index into that list, but you still have to have the full keys in the index. While in the try version, you don't need to have them. You only need to have some prefixes of the, uh, of the keys, which is much, much more efficient. And also because tries um, don't repeat prefixes, you have a very, uh, very efficient uh, storage of these things as well. Um, this is a, a very quick um, example of the, the kind of performance improvements that we've got from, from using this, uh, this try indexes. Um, RSS tables, when you're trying to do random, random 
reads inside an SS table uh, using this new SS table format. Uh, queries are about twice faster. Um, one thing that's really important and interesting is that um, the previous SS table index format had a specific special uh, key, um, key cache, which was meant to speed up uh, repeated queries for the same key. So once we query a key and find it, we store it in an in-memory component so that the next time we query for the same key, we can look, at, look that up in the in-memory component. And this speeds up things a lot. Well, for the tri-index format, we don't need this because even without a key cache, just because this, uh, the path that we followed to reach a value is already in the on-disk cache, this is as fast as, as it is from a special, with a special um, key cache. Now, this solves the SS table problem. Uh, what about the mem tables, which are the, the component on the top right here? The mem table uh, is crucial for performance because um, on one hand, when you write a piece of data, uh, you can't acknowledge it to the user un until it is uh, already in the mem table, so it's on the synchronous write path. It's, it's really important for the latency of writes. And also, uh, because these mem tables are uh, large things and they, um, they stay around for a while, but not forever, they're a pretty big problem for the garbage collector because it needs to follow it, uh, follow everything in the in the um, in the mem table, investigate it, uh, see what stays, see what doesn't stay. It uh, can cause long pauses in in garbage collection. Well, there are a few extra tricks that we um, did for the in-memory uh, tries. One of them is to use fixed block sizes. Um, block sizes are important for um, any in-memory store, uh, mainly because um, in computers you, you have uh, main memory, but you also have CPU caches, and CPU caches are usually working not with single bytes, but with uh, uh, chunks of bytes. They can be 32 or nowadays mostly 64 bytes, but um, it's, it's really valuable to be able to read, uh, to use as much as possible from everything, uh, from every time you get these 32 bytes when you're querying for a single byte. Um, so the way that we do this is by, again, using different types of nodes. Uh, in the example here, we have chains that are um, um, a sequence of multiple transitions uh, where, on, where we have only one child. We can store a full chain of up to 28 bytes in a single block. Uh, the other alternative is uh, in 32 bytes, we can fit four pointers, for 32-bit um, pointers. Um, so we can have a sparse node which has up to six children. Um, and finally, if, if a, a node has many, many uh, children, then what we do is because only, we can only fit eight possible transitions in, in a node, we split this into kind of a mini try. Where we have we use the top two bits of the key to um, I mean of the key byte to get into another block where we use the next three bits of the of the key to get into a third block and the third block has uh, a position for every for every possible of the eight um, using the last three bits uh, for the eight eight children that remain and this is um, this helps in two ways first of all, the first one is that the cache efficiency is very very high because this basically means that depending on the complexity of the, the try at the position we're at, we can do a lot. Um, I mean, we can do the best we can do with 32 bytes. Either the node is at this point very, very complex and we can uh, make decisions based only by uh, taking three bits of the transitions, or we have only one way to go, but maybe then it makes a lot of sense to follow quite a few more, a few transitions uh, using this one one piece of data that we brought from main memory. Uh, another important trick that we used is pointer tagging, which is um, because we use these uh, blocks, which are always 32 bytes, are the positions of, uh, of the blocks are always um, um, aligned to 32 bytes. There are five bits in each pointer that we can use for something else. And one of the things, one of the ways we use it is to denote the type of chain in, this, in these bits rather than waste space in the, in the structure to, to store it. And we also um, denote uh, leaves just by using negative numbers, which saves a lot of space because leaves are, most of the time, uh, the number of leaves on a try is 
practically the same as the number of all the other nodes. So not wasting a block of space for a leaf is very, very beneficial for the size of the structure. Um, so again, let's take a look at a little um, feature comparison for in-memory structures, B-trees versus improved tries. Um, when you have B-trees, uh, again, you have to store the whole long key. So it either has to be somewhere, uh, it has to be somewhere in memory, and you have to follow, uh, you have to do another pointer hop or a, to fetch another piece of memory from, um, uh, from main memory into cache to be able to work with this long key. And also, because they're long, they're very difficult to cache. You can only keep a few of these in, in, in your cache, which makes the whole process of walking and inserting things in, into the try much, much, much harder. Um, also, there's a, there's a problem of um, managing these um, variable size uh, nodes and, and keys, um, which involves very complex memory management and garbage collection problems <laughs> because of that. So what did we get as a result of this? Uh, we have a new implementation of mem tables for, for Cassandra, uh, which has been in use at Datastax's version of Cassandra for a while, but is now uh, also part of open source uh, Apache Cassandra with version 5. Um, just switching the mem table from one from the previous format to uh, the new format can lead to over twice better sustained performance for a database. And this example here, in the graph here, we are uh, showing the first hour of filling up uh, um, uh, a database node with um, several billion uh, entries. And as you can see in the graph, it starts about twice faster. Uh, the, the, the orange graph, which is the, the previous implementation, um, has some dips, which are usually the, the places where garbage collection had to run, and it had to spend a lot of time trying to analyze what, what's in, the, um, in these complex mem tables. We don't have these dips. And uh, yeah, sustainable throughput is uh, about twice, twice higher. Um, another thing that we saw, because the, the, the data structure is more compact, we can foot, fit more data in the same heap size, which is beneficial for other, uh, for other things in the, in the, down the pipeline as well. We, do, we can do less compaction when we're, doing, we're fitting more data in, in memory. Yeah, uh, there's one more component that I didn't, didn't talk about, and this is a bonus because we haven't done anything about it yet in Cassandra, but we plan to at some point. Uh, I talked about the yellow mem table component, the uh, level zero SS, the SS table components as well. There's also the merge component, which every time you query for a piece of data in Cassandra, you have to ask a few components. Do you have a value for this? Do you have a value for this? Do you have a value for this? The results come into a merge process, and the merge process has to get the data, reorder it, and produce it to the user. Uh, this merge process is also something that currently is done with comparisons, long typed comparisons, and is something that we can also implement using uh, a merge which is built on, on tries, where every time you're comparing, you're doing a process for a node, you're actually processing every possible, uh, I mean, every, every row that has this same prefix practically at the same time, which can lead to much better, better performance also of merges and slices. And one thing you can do now that we, you couldn't do before is, for example, you can have a regex style query on, on your data. And because regexes are a version of, um, of, of tries, where you actually have a, the only difference is that you have cycles, you can very easily do intersections between tries and, and uh, uh, and finite state automata, so you can do efficiently regular expression matching on, on your data as well. And this is all of my talk. Thank you for listening. Do you have any questions? Yes, we do have questions. I mean, maybe one. Um, I haven't looked at Cassandra for a while, but uh, do you still use Bloom filters before you go into these tries or skip lists? Yes. Did the trade-off change there? Did you change them anything when you? Um, the, the, tries? the way that the trade-off changed, we actually didn't do any. We didn't change any of the code for that. But um, 
the fact that queries are, uh, I mean, finding data using the indexes is, is now much faster means that you can achieve the same performance or similar performance with much smaller Bloom filters. Um, so the, we saw we couldn't drop the Bloom filters altogether because they still provide some, some benefit. But you could use smaller uh, Bloom filters with higher negative uh, False, uh, sorry, false positive probability, and you will still get performance, which is good. So, um, yeah, the, the, the point of uh, optimal performance moved a little bit, but we didn't change anything yet. Thank you. Any more thoughts or questions from the audience? Yes, there. No. <laughs> All right. Everybody is so stunned from your talk, like me. So thanks a lot, I would say. <laughs> mm -hmm.